one of the website I regularly follow, which is called digital.ai. Digital.ai is a website where you have a list of DevOps tools. You can create your pipeline using this set of tools. Here we have different segments. We have uh, source control management. First, I'm talking about source control management. Under this, we have many vendors. One of the vendors is called Git. GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, ISPW, Subversion. These are the different vendors we have in one of the segment, which is called source control management. As part of the source control management, I'll be using GitLab. What is GitLab? GitLab is, is one of the vendor who is part of source code management. And using the source code management, we collaborate with various team members as part of our software lifecycle. Here is the official website of GitLab platform. I would like to take this GitLab as source code management, part of our real-time projects. Even I will be working with uh, GitHub. Apart from that, as we are started with the day one, whatever I discuss, whatever the images I show you, screenshots or whatever the running notes, everything I'll be sharing through this particular website, which is called gitlab.com. Why only GitLab? Why can't I go with other vendors? There are, uh, we have other vendors as well here. GitHub is one of the vendor. Bitbucket is another vendor also we have here. Why we are not going with these different vendors? Because there, there are some limitations with GitHub and Bitbucket. GitLab has number of public repositories and there is no limitation upon the storage as well. Because of that reason, what I did, I created upon with the GitLab.com. How? Using one of my existing Gmail ID by going to this login button. You can associate with one of your uh, Google account or else click on register now. Fill your details, first name, last name, username, email ID, password, and then click on register. The moment you fill this information and you'll be able to receive an email from GitLab.com, then Authenticate it, then log into the GitLab platform. So GitLab platform is open source, source code management means you can create number of public and private repositories under free trial. You can see here, GitLab.com offers free unlimited private repositories and unlimited collaborators. This option doesn't exist with GitHub. That's the reason I'm using GitLab to share running notes, images, screenshots, and uh, any documents. To create account with the gitlab.com, it's very simple. Fill this information, and you must provide one of your existing account of Gmail, Yahoo, whatever it is, Outlook. You just need to have one email ID. In that, you have to create. Once it is created, you have to log into it by go to login button, git, gitlab.com. Fill this information, just provide username, password and click on sign in. Once you sign in, then you'll be able to see the dashboard like this. Of course, you will not have all these repositories. You will just have the in dashboard. For our batch purpose, I'm creating a repository. See, you just need to create account. After that, you don't do it anything. Don't get confused yourself. Just create account with the gitlab.com. And don't do anything until I say. 
from my side from my side what am i doing is i already have account i logged into my account and i'm creating a repository you don't need to create until i say create a blank project i'm creating a project which is uh, name of the project will be visual path underscore aws devops to share session notes because of that reason i'm creating this you no need to once again i'm repeating you no need to create anything Name of the project, description, no need to select any uh, deployment targets, visibility, for now it's public, but tomorrow I'll make it private, by the time you all create account with the GitLab. I'm creating a repository, part of gitlab.com, under my username, with a repository name called Visual Path. Visual Path underscore AWS DevOps. Click on create before I do that. You don't need to create a repository. Just create a account with the GitLab and do let me know. repository has been created this is the repository this repository need to be downloaded onto my local for that what i will do is i will download one of the software which is called git software git is part of distributor version control system and this is about CLI distributed version control system. And this is created by Linus Torvalds. Who created Linux kernel in 1991. The same person has created uh, Linux uh, Git in 2005. So let's go to the official website. We download Git software to talk to GitLab or to talk to GitHub or Bitbucket or could be any vendor. So we download this software upon our operating system. We will install it. I'm a Mac user. On a Mac, I have a terminal. If you're a Windows user, you have CMD and PowerShell. Once you open your CLI tools, you check version, git space, hyphen hyphen version. I install git software to interact with a GUI version control system vendors like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or AWS code commit, or Azure repos. So we would like to clone a repository. We would like to clone a repository. Clone means nothing but download repository this repository has been created by me it's empty now to clone it i need to use one of the url here i'll go with the secure one which is https copy this url go uh, to my Kato, local one question like uh, what is the difference between this cloning with the https and ssh like later we'll discuss people will get confused now and okay. um, we'll talk about specific git then we'll discuss okay okay yeah. Fair 
So I'm cloning a repository, clone space, the URL. Clone is nothing but a download. I have successfully downloaded a repository we just created as part of GitLab. Here is a repository which has been downloaded by me. And there is a difference between repository and the operating system folder. How to identify a repository or a OS folder or directory is whenever you are part of a folder or whenever you list a folder, if that folder consists of a hidden directory called dot git, this is a hidden directory called dot git inside the folder, then that means it's it's version control system repository. This is what you have to identify. Most of you are uh, you are uh, very flexible with the Windows, not with the CLI, not with the Linux. So I just cloned a repository now. This repository is available part of my local machine as a one of the local folder, but it is not a local folder. It is a repository. And this repository has been created part of GitLab. Of this repository, I would like to open with one of the IDE tool, Integrated Development Environment. Let me take you to the IDE tool. We must download and install one of the IDE tool, which is a, a VS Code, which is from Microsoft. We have many IDE tools in the market. Eclipse, PyCharm, Atom, Notepad++. One of the IDE tool I use is VS Code, which is Visual Studio Code, because it has a lot of functionalities. What it is in a layman way is, it's a text editor on our operating system. The difference between your notepad and this is, notepad has a simple UI user interface where there is no option called plugins. Here, we can install a number of plugins. So being a developer or DevOps engineer, we work with code that may be simple, Shell script, cover shell, Ansible file, Ansible YAML file, or could be a Python code, or could be AWS CLI commands, or could be a Java code, could be anything. We need one of the IDE tool, being a DevOps engineer. So you must download and install VS Code if you want to be synced with Slug along with me. Or if you already have a favorite IDE tools, that's fine, you can use them. But throughout our session, I'll be using VS Code as, a, as an IDE tool. So you must download and install this, it's open source. Before this, we downloaded and installed it, even this is open source. When you install, you don't need to customize anything. Let's go to the next, next and install it. I'll show you how to do that. And you can download and install VS Code. Once it is available on your machine, let's open the VS Code now. I'm just opening a VS Code onto my machine. Here is the VS Code. I have installed many of the plugins. You can see JSON plugin, AWS plugin, Kubernetes plugin, Azure, Docker, PowerShell. We can install plugins by going to the extensions. You can search for it and install it. For example, I want to install Angular plugin. It's already there. Ansible plugin, it's already installed. Even this is also installed. 
even this is also installed. So I installed plugins by going to the extensions and I installed it. Now it's a time to open a repository, the one which we just cloned it. This repository, we have cloned it. I'm opening this with the help of VS Code. By going to the open folder, I'll go to my users and the username. There is a folder called repos. The year we downloaded, I think what it cloned it at 8.17. Click on open. A repository has been opened part of a VS Code. And part of VS Code, we have one more uh, functionality, which is called terminal functionality. Here is a terminal. Click on your terminal. If you are a Windows user, as part of your Windows, if you install VS Code, then when you open a terminal, it by default opens with a CMD or PowerShell. I'm a Mac user. For me, it is open with a Z shell. Even I can switch to bash. Why bash? Or oh, how I got bash is because I installed Git on my machine. As I installed Git on my machine, I got this bash option to switch. Even as part of your Windows, when you open a terminal, Make sure that is it a CMD or PowerShell. If you want to switch to other shells, you have to click on drop down and select that particular shell environment. You can switch. Here I have nothing, it's just empty folder and readme.md file. I have it. As we are starting for the day, until now, whatever I did, this is from my side. You don't need to do it anything from your side. Don't get confused. I'm part of, I'm, I'll always work with the two different ways here. Graphically, also I can create folder. This is a folder creation button, and this is a file creation button. I can create through graphically, or I can work with the command line. When you execute these commands on your, on your CMD or PowerShell, you will not see this output. Why? Because these commands are related to Unix type operating system. So if you want to execute the commands, what I'm executing, you must switch to bash. Under git bash only, you'll have these commands. With, when you're with CMD and PowerShell, do not execute the commands, the one which I'm executing it. If you're not familiar with the commands, no worries. Go with the graphical folder creation, file creation. As I'm familiar with the graphical uh, command line and graphical, so I'm creating a folder today. I'm saying day one, 2022, 03, and 08. A folder has been created. I'm going inside the folder. And then I'm creating a running notes. A folder and a running notes has been created by me as we are starting off the day. So I would like to say, get started with skilling and upskilling on AWS DevOps. As part of this, we need to set up our laptop. I can say workspace, workspace. Workspace is nothing but your laptop or your desktop as per the skilling process. What all are required? For example, first you need a browser, which is mostly preferred Chrome. Second one is about IDE tool, which is Visual Studio Code. Third one is about source code management, CLI tool. That is nothing but 
git fourth one is about uh, source code management gui account nothing but gitlab you need to create account with the gitlab then you must uh, download and install virtualbox virtualization tool which is oracle virtualbox why only oracle virtualbox is because it's open source virtualbox then we will be working with operating system as of now we most of you are logged in through through windows so we don't need to download and install windows download install and configure operating systems we don't do windows but we work with linux because you know how to do with windows so as part of linux we have distributions we work with the linux distributions we have many distributions like debian ubuntu is one category centos archel nothing but red hat fedora amazon linux oracle linux susi susi etc are the linux distributions and we will download iso files in today's session we will set up all this in today's session so whatever i was discussing at end of the session what i will do regularly i will commit my changes i'm just showing you now but normally i do this step at end of the session on daily basis so that whatever i discussed at my machine these things will be synchronized to gitlab so this is getting started these commands you are not aware no need to worry we have separate session for it uh, and uh, if i start explaining then it will be advanced topics i see the audience are from different uh, background so let's make it as as a beginner level for now later i will explore it to it for now please cooperate whoever it is so if you see here there is a folder and there is a running notes whatever i discuss it is here it's synchronized to my repository because i push the changes this url is accessible by anybody for today from tomorrow i'll make it private tomorrow i'll make it private so that nobody can access it as of now i shared the url in the chat window please select check from your side whether you are able to see day one folder whether you are able to see running notes regarding running notes you will be receiving from my side video will be shared by our team and uh, you should not be confused from tomorrow if you want to access this particular uh, repository you should share me the usernames of your gitlab top right corner you will have your gitlab usernames these usernames you must share with me at least for two days i'll keep it open for everybody third day i will make it as private when i make it as a private then i need to add you as a contributor and to this repository as a member then only you will be able to access the things what i commit here before i move further are we clear so far do you have any questions on to it yeah i'm good
no question I, perfect and one more thing i would like to suggest you all for example we are uh, connected from remotely from different places so our backgrounds may not be clear sometimes due to some reasons our things we will be part of different locations where you have a lot of noise so make sure that you are when you are at noisy place use the chat window to acknowledge or if you want to ask some question put it in the chat window first priority is put it in the chat window and um, make sure that you don't unmute it when you're in noisy place if you have comments there is no background noise so always skip and you can talk to me thank you so far we are clear as of now what you have learned is how do i get a notes from the trainer this is what you have learned now let us explore into it as we are starting up the day starting the session what all are required to get started is you must have a browser that's any way it is there you must have one of the ide tool just now i explained how to download it and let's do hands on this then i must have one windows operating system in order to show this even to show git i must have one windows for this what i will do is i will uh, log into aws i will provision one of the windows operating system upon that i will install that by looking at my steps you can also do the same the reason why i am provisioning an operating system here because i am a mac user but you are a windows user and i asked you to download from your side you might experience some some queries so that i would like to address by doing the hands on here upon my machine i also have a virtual box even on top of the virtual box i can go with the windows but to save the time i'm using one of the cloud computing vendor for, uh, to provide a solution for my problem whatever the steps i'm doing you can ignore it this is only to explain you about download install configure git visual studio code and configuring uh, things only for this purpose i'm explaining this let's launch i would like to launch a windows operating system i'm just checking windows 10 do I have windows 10 here i don't see windows 10 here these are the windows images i have it one of the windows operating system i'll provision it so that i can explain you how to work with uh, it and vs code i would like to provision windows 2022 the latest version of course it's equal to your windows uh, 10 7 whatever it is you can ignore all of these steps whatever i'm doing it this is only for my to show you the lab, I'm just doing this. The steps, whatever, whatever I'm going to explain now, after this, you just need to follow them and should do that from your side and one more thing also i would like to do aws cli should be downloaded and installed on your machine cli 2 you need to download and install aws cli on your operating system and you should create account with aws as well then you must download and install Oracle VirtualBox.
Oracle Virtual Box latest version. Then we are dealing with Ubuntu, Ubuntu 20.04, ISO download. And that too, you must download and install. Um, you, you must download a CLA version. Go with a server installation image. This is a link. I will be sharing all, all of this information in our VS Code itself. So downloading and installing of Ubuntu ISO file, the URL is here. You must download and install server edition. Server version. And that too under server edition. Go with this one. Which has 1.2 GB size. And you must just download and install Oracle Virtual Box, which is a latest version. Here is the link 6.1 is the latest one. Six point one. Next one is about VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Go with the latest bit. Go with the latest. latest and creating account with a uh, GitLab. You can use this URL to create account with the GitLab. Now let's go back to the instance which I provision as part of AWS. And also you need to download and install AWS CLI. To download and install AWS CLI based on your operating system, you select this option, download MSI file, copy link address, go back to the create account with AWS and Download, install, and configure AWS CLI2. Creating account with AWS is very simple. AWS.amazon.com slash free. So what I suggest is please go through these steps. First, try to understand what AWS is offering and what is a free trial usage, what is paid, what is pay as you go. You can explore before you create account, please explore and do it. Then you need to download and install it. I'll show you how to do these steps. You can just do the similar way. Still it is uh, status check is two by two. I need to wait a few more minutes. At least one minute to let my instance come up. We'll wait one more minute to connect this instance. Meanwhile, creating account with the GitLab and AWS and downloading ISO file of Ubuntu, downloading VS Code, downloading uh, Git, Downloading Oracle Virtual Box, downloading AWS CLI. This all you have to do it to get started. These are the prerequisites to, to get started with AWS DevOps. Click on connect. 
I'm connecting to a remote Linux machine by clicking this sort of uh, remote Windows operating system. There's a DNS name, there's a username, get the password. Password is available part of my local machine, which is called AWS icon issue is the name of the key pair that I need to attach here. This is the right key pair. This need to be attached so that I'll get my uh, password. Here is an encrypted password. Here is a password for to log into the Windows machine. Click on open button to get logged into the remote or Windows operating system. To this DNS name, we are going to connect. The username is administrator. The password we just generated. Here is a password. Click on continue. We launched a Windows 2022 operating system onto AWS. This is only for demonstration purpose to get started with the tools called like Git, VS Code, AWS CLI, Oracle Virtual Box, and all of this. Instance is coming up. As I'm a Mac user, so I'm just showing you onto one of the instance called Windows. Here we go. So we have successfully launched a Linux uh, Windows operating system. Here it is. And as part of this Windows, in the same way you have your Windows 10. And onto your operating system, you have uh, multiple browsers. One of the browser, I'm opening it. Oh, no, no. I think it is uh, wrongly conveyed. If you're a Mac user, you just need to download and install the way I'm going to do it. If you're a Windows user, you should download and install the way I'm doing it. Don't do this step. Launching of Linux Windows machine in AWS, don't do this. The reason why I'm showing you is I already installed it on the machine. I cannot uh, show you from scratch. To tell you all this hands-on step-by-step, I'm using one of the operating system as a reference here because most of you are uh, Windows users. Don't get confused. I'm just taking in a scenario here and doing it for your understanding purpose. First tool, we must install Git on our operating system, git scmcom Either it could be a Mac user or Windows user or could be a Linux user. The process is the same. As part of my laptop, I already installed all of the all of them. That is the reason I'm taking one of the operating system as an example, and there I'm executing it. Whatever I do it right away, please do the same on your Mac or Windows or Linux. Got me? Please confirm. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, okay. Because this is very, very important. When you're getting started, if you're not clear, so you will end up with a lot of confusion. So I want to make it very clear. Because when we are clear, we do very clear things. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Now I opened a browser. The default browser in Windows is uh, Edge. The browser is open. I'm trying to open my computer here. This is the my computer. On your Windows, you have uh, uh, two tools like CMD and PowerShell. Even I'll open them. CMD and PowerShell. CMD. I just typed it. There is a latency. We have to just wait. This is the PowerShell window. And 
I'm looking for CMD. Here is the CMD. These two tools are Windows native tools. Means as part of Windows operating system, CMD will be available and PowerShell will be available. Here, if you try to execute commands which are related to Unix type commands, these commands will not work here. You see, these commands will not work here. If you want to execute Unix type commands on your Windows, then there is a solution called Git. You must download and install a software called Git. With the help of Git, how many advantages you have is, first advantage is you can interact with the version control systems like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket. That is their one advantage. Second advantage is if you are on Windows, if you want to execute Unix type commands, after installing Git Bash on your Windows, you will be able to execute Unix type commands on your Windows. This is the second advantage. Third advantage is we generally connect a remote Linux machines with the help of Putty. So instead of Putty, we can use Git. Using once you install Git, we can do SSH from the command line itself. That we will do it step by step, but I'm, before we continue, we are doing this. So I opened from my windows this particular URL, git-scm.tub. Hence I see 2.35.war. Just click on download for windows. The moment I click on it, you will see one file will be downloading here. If not, wait for it. Go for standalone installation, 64-bit. Click on this. The file is downloading now. A file is downloaded successfully. And uh, if you want to install this, uh, just right click, run as administrator or run as normal user, that's fine. But I am going with the run as administrator. And if you observe here, I'm not going to change anything. That means I'm not custom, I'm not going to customize anything. I will go to next. Next, 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 install. I haven't customized anything. I was just doing next until I see install. And I clicked on install. I'm installing a Git software. When you install Git software on your operating system, it has three advantages. It can interact with the version control system. It can execute the Unix like Unix type commands on your Windows. You can do as such to remote Linux and Unix operating system using Git. Successfully, I have installed a software and I need to close this CMD. Even I would like to close this PowerShell because we installed one of the CLI tool. Again, I'm going to the start button and here you see the Git folder. Just now we installed, you see Git Bash. Git Bash similar like CMD and PowerShell. It looks like similar. I'm increasing the font size as it is uh, 9 pt. Go to 14. This is my git bash. And I can open the PowerShell as well. It is a PowerShell. And I'll open CMD as well. 
cmd command prompt this are your uh, windows native tools cmd and the version now on git bash i mean i'm executing pwd command the same command i'm executing on cmd it says pwd is not recognized i'm executing on powershell it works and again i'm executing ls space f and rta and the same command i'm executing on powershell doesn't work so the commands if you want to execute the command which i have executed just now it's like unix unix like type command so if you want to execute unix type commands you open a cm uh, git bash and execute it instead of depend on cmd instead of depend on powershell so this is about git bash download install configure and check the difference between your os native tools with the git bash next tool we are going to download and install is vs code this is fall under ide tool integrated development environment the text editor to say simple in a layman is a text editor download for windows file will be downloaded in here Finally, I would like to download one more tool, which is called Oracle Virtual Box. This is part of virtualization technology. Click on this button so that Oracle Virtual Box will be downloaded for your Windows. Select Windows Host. Uh, Kesha, sorry to interrupt. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I think the, the URLs which you mentioned in the notes are not committed yet. Or just ping the URLs in the chat. No, I will do it end of the session. In the middle of the session, I will not do it. I will not commit it. I will do okay. it end of the session by looking at them. You can do it offline practice. Because if I keep on commit, so I miss something. So please cooperate with me. So we successfully downloaded VS Code, Oracle Virtual Box. And the next one is about, uh, we would like to download Ubuntu ISO 20.04 download. Scroll it till down. And you will see, and here you see 1.2 GB server edition please click on this iso file will be downloaded i'm cancelling for my side because i don't want to do it right up let it download that's fine and i'm going with another uh, tool which is called uh, aws cli to download aws cli to download for windows Whatever the links I'm accessing, I'll be sharing with you. You no need to worry. I strongly, will, I mean, I completely understand that you are new to all this, whatever I'm explaining. Just pay attention as, as a layman and you'll get to know everything. So I am part of here and just clicking on .msi file for Windows and you started downloading. Do you see, started downloading it. We are downloading uh, operating system. I'll pause it because I don't want now. Anyway, I have it. I'll show you. But from your side, you need to download. Don't pause it. We have successfully downloaded five softwares. First one is a version control system. Second one is IDE tool. And uh, third one is about virtualization software. Fourth one is about ISO file. Fifth one is about AWS CLI. To install all of this, right click. Most of the things are are no need to do customization just right click and say next 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 and do it most of the things 
So I showed you one example, follow the same example and do it for other. So you must download all of all of this list of softwares and install on your Windows. If you come across any error while you're doing it, you can make a note of it, you can let me know so that I can address your queries. For now, I provision this operating system. I'm done with my usage. I have explained to you. I don't need this Windows machine anymore because I, the purpose I opened this to explain this. So I'm terminating it. For your case, your laptop it is. You're, you're doing on your laptop or desktop. Now, whatever I have explained you, including images, screenshots, URLs, I'll be committing here by going to the day one folder. Now inside the day one folder, all the links are mentioned here. And there are some images also we have. These are the two images. Now, images you can see over them. This is about GitLab repo creation. You don't need to create for now. Don't, don't create anything. Just do whatever I uh, asked you to do. And this one is about download and install. Download, install and configure softwares. Now I'll commit the changes. The moment I commit, you'll be able to receive the changes onto GitLab. This is called version control system. I added it, now I'm committing it, saying uh, download install and configure. That's a message. When you're committing something, you have to give a message. What all these commands we will discuss later as you are a beginner, so I can strongly understand. Here, if I refresh, I'll be able to see day one folder. Day one folder, you can see running nodes, you can see two images. So regarding running nodes, you don't need to look after anywhere you'll be receiving from here in a structured way. So this is a URL, you can uh, bookmark it. It's only open for only two days. After that, it's going to be private. When it is private, you must share your GitLab username with me. Then I will add you as a member to this repository. Then you'll be able to access it. I hope you are clear whatever I explain. If you have any questions, then you can ask me. If you are clear, please do confirm the chat window or you can unmute and talk to me. Yes, I'm clear on this. Yeah. Thank you, Sudhi. Can you add my email ID? I'm just chat uh, typing in my. No, chat. I'll do it. I'll do it in tomorrow. When I make it private, it's kind of exercise. Everything is, I will do it as exercise. So okay. Okay. tomorrow I'll make this, as it is public now. So tomorrow I'll make it how to convert a repository to private, then how to add a user. Then I'll take, I'll ask you, you can give me that time. For now, anybody can access it because it's public. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Thank you all and I wish you a wonderful uh, skilling and upskilling journey with Visual Path and with Mycel. And um, I wish you a wonderful day. Let's connect tomorrow. Until then, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.